Well, 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 what can I say? The pandemic cannot stop him. A juggernaut can't stop him. Hell, even a toilet paper loo roll shortage can't stop anybody from going to see my boy Spider-Man at a brand new film at the cinema and it's already killing everything else in its path. Ah, oh, Kevin Feige and Disney sitting in that cornerstone of their offices thinking, wow, we done. So this is great. You can see from the headline here, Spider-Man No Way Home shatters records with a huge $50 million just in the preview screenings alone. That is insane. So let me just blow this screen up a bit more because I like things blown up. Spider-Man No Way Home blew the doors off the box office, earning a massive you know what already. The Sony Pictures release, and that's an important point to note because it is not a Disney Marvel release. It is a Sony Pictures release, even though it has some ties with the MCU. But I will say this much, this film feels like an outlier. It doesn't do anything for the multiverse going forward. I don't think so anyway. So the Sony Pictures release is on pace to pull in between 150 to 180 million over its opening weekend, setting a new high watermark for blockbusters during the COVID era. Even, even rising cases of the virus and the emergence of a new and troubling variant seem unlikely to stall the webhead. That could change, of course, as the weekend progresses. No, it won't. People will keep going to see it. I actually spoke to a member of Cineworld two days ago and they showed me the list of people expected to turn up just this week alone to see No Way Home and it was over 2,000 patrons. That doesn't sound like a lot for London, but for the local cinema I go to, which is pretty cool, it's a cine world, that's great. That's great news for them. They want people to come in and pay those employees and to obviously support the film industry. So if projections hold, and really, why would they not? Spider-Man No Way Home will be the first pandemic era movie to cross 100 million in a single weekend. Yeah! Only one other film, Sony's comic book sequel Venom, Let There Be Carnage, has come close to hitting that benchmark with initial revenues at still an impressive $90 million domestically. The result is the third highest preview gross of all time, tripling that of Spider-Man Homecoming, which I love by the way, the highest grossing Spider-Man in terms of previews at $15.5 million. Avengers Endgame holds the record for preview results with 60 million ultimately earning 357 million in its initial weekend. Runner-up is the Star Wars Force Awakens. <laughs> with 57 million, million en route to an opening weekend gross of $248 million. That is such fantastic news. And John Watts, we've got to thank him. He's the director of the previous um, home films and critics who liked it handed it a 94% fresh. So he started that at 100%. You saw my video that I made a few days ago, but it's dropped to 94%. I think that can still change in a couple of weeks because more people will probably come back. More members of the public will come back and will probably push that rating all the way through because by God, it deserves it. And I will say, um, let's have a look here. Yeah, Peter de Bruges wrote, and I think this is actually true, convoluted as the Marvel Cinematic Universe has gotten, that's very true, Holland's latest opus spins two decades and, th oh, oh gosh, right, I can't read that bit. Well, with results like these, Holland and his agents must be smiling. If Sony and Marvel want to keep him playing Peter Parker and his alter ego, they're gonna be signing some mighty big checks. Checks, by the way, you Yankees, is spelled C-H-E-Q-U-E-S. Oh my God, will the Americans ever learn? I've had to blank that paragraph out, folks, because it kind of gave something away, which I was a bit shocked about. I almost read it out on air. So folks, if you enjoy this really awesome news, I knew it was gonna steamroll a box office. Come on, man. Like. Spider-Man in the right hand, in Sony's hands, by the way. Remember, Sony bought the IP for Spider-Man from Marvel Comics when they were about to go broke in 1999 for $7 million. And how much have they made on that character since they bought him? Yeah, 
We're talking probably nearly 6 billion. I'm probably exaggerating there. I haven't checked those figures, but put it in the way, put it this way, it is in the billions. So folks, if you enjoyed this quick video today, don't forget to smash that like button, rattle the cage on the subscribe button, and I'll see you on my next video. 